Hello everybody, Andy McGuire here. I'm just going to do a quick tutorial for editing a headshot. Now I've already done this a couple of months ago, but I just wanted to show you um, how we do it once again. I've got another client here called Toby Redpath. He's a student that I worked with a couple of days ago and he's I've sent him his proofs and he's given me his choices and for his last choice he's asked me to choose one for him. So I've chosen one that's right here that I particularly like and uh, it's slightly different to, to the rest of the choices that he's chosen. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we edit a headshot and add drama. Okay, so the first thing that we always do is we've got to change our composition to 8x10. Now, we're obviously we're in the develop module here. And if I didn't, if you didn't already know, I'm in Lightroom 5 as well. So the way, let me just reset that. So when once you've got your photo ready to go, you click, you just come over here, you hit the little grid sign and aspect and you go drop that down from original to 4x5 or 8x10 and then what we're going to do is we're going to just get our composition sorted now I'm going to go just above the hairline or just below it just to try and get rid of that little stowaway little bit there good now I quite like this composition now it you might think that it's a little bit biased to the left side of the uh, to the left side of the frame so why don't we try and correct that Let's just try and change that angle to make him look a little bit more like he's a little bit more central. Now obviously as you can see he was actually kneeling down on his right knee and I'm obviously above him. So what I've done is obviously I've just corrected that. Now I've obviously incorporated a bit of a tilt in the shot to add a little bit of drama. Now I haven't done a tutorial yet when I'm actually shooting the um, shooting headshots but that is one of the key things to do when you're working with actors. Little tilts, little head turns, really add drama. So let's get cracking them. So the first thing that I always do, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go, what's my zoom at one by two? Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to just hit the uh, the brush. I'm going to choose a brush and I'm going to hit the drop down to iris enhance. Now what I'm going to do, my mask overlay is selected. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it over his eyeball. And we're going to just enhance those eyes. Now be careful not to get the eyelids in because we will be using the clarity slider. So try and not to get any eyelid in there if you can. If you hold, hold down Alt, that obviously deletes. And when you let go, you've got the plus sign. Plus and, plus and negative obviously does what it says on the tin. Okay then, so let me just tidy that up. And you, I mean, I'm using a Mac here as you can probably see. But with my mouse, when I just scroll backwards and forwards on it, I can change the size of the brush size. So that's selected. Let me hit unselect the mask overlay. And if I just play around with some of these things, I can see exactly what I've done. So there we are. We're on zero. And it wanted me to go up to around about here. But I'm going to push it a little bit further to about 0.43. I'm going to stick my highlights and my shadows up slightly. Now the saturation I like to do on brown eyes because that doesn't really make too much of a difference on brown eyes. If they're if they're bright blue, then it's going to make a big difference. But these are quite brown, so um, all we're doing here is just warming the, warming the eyes up. And as you can see, I've got some nice catch lights in the photo, which are basically what the you know just to give the eye something you know. A, just a catch light basically is what is reflected in the eye and how you're illuminating your subject. Now that could be a, a ring flash on your camera, it could be a, an umbrella fla an umbrella flash, it could be the sun, it could be anything. So it's your main light source, but in this case, it's my gold reflector. So I'm quite happy with the eyes, they look quite cool. So the next thing that I'm going to do is beard enhancing. Now this is quite a cool little thing that I like to do. Again, it adds drama, it makes men look a little bit more manly and I think my clients are always really happy with it so I'm just going to draw over those little bits of hair and I'm just going to as you can see with my brush I've just dropped the exposure slightly but I mean I might tweak that soon most importantly though I've I've, I've increased my clarity I couldn't think of the word then sorry about that um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go over everywhere where there's a little bit of hair and I'm going to zoom out and see how that looks. Now if anywhere looks particularly over, over clarityed, clarified, then again let's just take that same brush by clicking on the little dot, hit Alt and let's just remove that little bit there. And if you want to see exactly what, which areas you've covered, 
just hit the select mask overlay. So I can see a few areas where I haven't. So I'm just gonna hit those just so I can equal those up. And then I'm gonna bring it all the way around. Good, and I can do this little bit here. And try not to get the lips, because we don't wanna hit lips. Now luckily, um, for, for this particular client, Toby's got really good skin, so that makes your life as a photographer much easier. So I've only got one or two blemishes to get rid of. Now he looks a little bit sort of Italian, Spanishy there, and I don't think that's really him. So I'm just gonna drop that clarity a little bit more towards zero. In fact, I'm gonna take it back to zero. And hang on, I've not even selected it. Hang on, sorry about that, everybody. Okay, so let me just hit that. See, that's where it, that's what we can do with the, with the slider. Now I'm gonna take that to zero, and I'm gonna just drop the clarity slightly to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now, as you can probably agree, that's looking a lot better already. So if I hit the, uh, the backslash, I think that's a backslash, um, when you're in the develop module, you can see what, how far you've come out. It's only a couple of subtle changes, but I'm sure you'll agree we're looking much better already. Now, if I zoom in, I'm just going to get the spot removal tool and I'm going to get rid of a couple of blemishes. I'm going to get rid of a couple of stray hair between the eyebrows there. And, and then we'll be reet, as they say up north. Right, now, a lot of people will look at that and think, well, he looks a bit tired. You can argue as a photographer that that's real and that's how you can look when you look into when you go into an audition. Or you can do your client a favor and just get rid of that little bit of tightness. I'll show you the way I do it. I hit the, um, what's this, the spot removal tool, is that? Yes. And what we can do in Lightroom 5, we can click and we can drag. So instead of the old Lightroom 4, where we literally had to draw about 800 little circles to remove it, we can literally click and drag. So what I like to do, I like to just go along a solid line and then I clone from just below. So I'm just going to start under his right eye, and then I'm just going to copy what exactly is underneath. So we're getting rid of that line. Now I'll show that will show you exactly what we've cloned. Now what I want to try and do is I want to try and overlap the two lines, so there shouldn't be a big line in the middle. Now if there is, like we can see on the left hand side of that eye, I'm just going to hit the spot removal tool, select soften skin. And just in between that, just take an average of where we've drawn and just draw all the way across that. And that should take all the clarity and, and you know, just soften that eye up. So again, that's where we were. That's where we are. So that's good. So I'm going to do exactly the same on the other eye. So again, just draw in under that eye nice and slowly. Then we can just make a selection, which is just underneath. Now, again, we don't want in Britain, we don't want unrealistic headshots. So we've got to show to our clients them on a good day. Now what I always say, it's you on a good day, not you on an unrealistic best day ever. When you're getting ready for an audition, and when you go to an audition, your actor who you're shooting probably won't be giving themselves as much care and attention as they probably would, for example, when they're getting ready for a wedding. They're probably just going to an audition because actors will go to hundreds and hundreds of auditions in their life. So they just want to look like them on a good day. So don't make them look too airbrushed. Don't go. Don't go too mad on the uh, on the softened skin slider because then they'll look too Americanized, as I call it. Nothing wrong with that because in the American market that is how we do things, but in the UK we don't do that. So let's not. Now a couple of things I just like to get rid of a couple of protruding hairs that literally try and make their way into the frame. Just try and match them up so they're nice and. Um, so they're nice and, um, what do you call it, subtle, get rid of that, and I think that's that's fine. That little hair over there, let's get rid of that, that's fine. Right, so we're already looking really good. We're not too far from finishing already. So what have I done so far? I've done the beard, I've done the eyes, and I've done the under the eyes. Now, one thing I love to do, just to add a couple of things, is a little bit of drama. Now, what I select is my spot removal tool. I select burn, which, as you know, is just darkening your, uh, your image. And what we do, we just literally draw 
over the shadows. And look at what that's doing. That is just enhancing the shadow, making a little bit of drama. In fact, that makes quite a lot of drama, I think. And also your, your clients will absolutely love you for this because it really enhances jaw bones, cheekbones, etc. So again, don't get mad on it. Make it try and make it nice and subtle. So draw, I always I always recommend draw your shadow first. If you're happy with it, then come away from it and then have a look at your sliders. So how how does that look? So that's where we are, that's where it wanted us to be. Let's just take it towards zero a little bit. Let's take it to 0 0.14. So it's not much of a difference at all. But let's have a look from where we started. That's where we started. That's where we are now. So just look at those shadows, especially on the left and the right side of the face. Very subtly different. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit further with those shadows. And I'm going to go a little bit darker. Just to add a little bit more drama. Now, if, you're, if your client was happy, smiling, kind of like, you know, you know, really grinning, then obviously don't get too mad on the shadows because you don't want them to make, you don't want to look like some sort of psychopathic serial killer, which you will, which you can imply from adding shadows. But when, you're, when your actor is looking quite moody and, and, and in Toby's case, you know, quite brooding and quite handsome, these little shadows really do make a big, big difference. Now, the last thing I want to do is just play with the overall shadows and highlights of the picture. Now, if it was a landscape or if it was a cityscape, one thing I would love to do is enhance the shadows and drop down the highlights. But as you can see, the HDR look in a, um, in a portrait looks terrible. We don't want to see too much detail in shadows. So let's take that back down to normal. But what we do like to see is more highlights. So let's drag, what I would normally do is take the highlights above the shadows. So that's where they were, roughly. Let's take them above. Yeah, so that overexposure looks really nice. Now, if we drop the shadows, we lose detail in the hair, and we don't want to do that. So let's take them above zero, but just below our highlights to around about there. So you're happy with it, so there's a bit of detail in the hair. Now, one final thing that I love to do, in fact, no, I lied, two final things. I will just do what I call reverse saturation. Now, this is positive saturation, and I'll show you what I do with reverse saturation. So I'm going to pull that below zero, so our, uh, our, uh, so we're, our client's heading towards mono, but we're not going to mono. We're going just below zero, let's say minus 10. But what we are going to do, we're going to pick up the vibrance. Now, the vibrance will just give us a really nice, subtle colour cast. Now, that will look really, really cool. So that's where, our zero, where we're at zero. We're going to pull it just below to about minus 10. And we'll go a little bit further with the vibrance. Cool. And the last thing I like to do is just to scroll down all the way. And we can add a vignette. Now, a vignette straight away looks really, really, really cool. I love add, adding vignettes to almost everything that I do. It's a little bit of a trademark. I didn't used to like vignettes, but I think they look really, really cool. I think they're really nice. So they just basically darken your edges. And if you wanted to do a, a, a instead of a black vignette, you can add a white, add color, add whites to your to your corners. So instead of going dark, you can go light. But I always prefer to add a dark vignette to make my images pop. And let's just add a, a touch of exposure just to brighten up our subject. And I, again, I keep saying this is the last thing I do, but this is the final, 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 final thing that I do. I'm just going to add a bit of sharpness. So let's see how much we can add before we start to look silly. So we're on zero. Let's go halfway. Way too much. Let's go a quarter. How does that look? Still a bit much in my opinion. So let's go a little bit further down. What's that? Roughly about an eighth of the way through. We're at, we're at 26 out of, is it 200, 150? We're at, let's say 26. I think that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to go backslash and show you what I've done. That's where we started. And that's where we finished. So again, it's not looking too different, but I'm sure you'll agree those little touches make a headshot straight off the bat, straight off the camera into a professional headshot. So when, you're, when your client has these back, they will be really, really happy with what you've done. Okay, so thanks very much, everyone. I'm going to show you that on full screen by pressing F, and that's where we are. And we can even do it in this module as well. Um, no, we can't. <laughs> I thought I could. Um, so that's where we, um, just to remind you what we look like now. So yeah, so that's Toby Redpath's headshot, um, one of his five. Um, if you're an actor watching this and you'd like to get your headshots done with me, then please do get in touch. 
I'm at www.andrewmaguire.co.uk forward slash headshots. Um, have a look at my blog, and um, and also just just um, please please comment and subscribe to to uh, to my channel. I've always got little handy bits and bobs that I do. So thanks very much for watching, everyone, and all the best. Cheers.